The, oh, Ruth Dyson. Mr Speaker, I hope you weren't going to put the question oh, so I was, early in the I debate. Um, can I say that this um, bill, I agree with the member who's just resumed his seat, this bill is, um, although largely technical, um, quite substantial and um, certainly engendered a lot of debate and consideration by the Select Committee. I want to commend all the members of the Government Administration Committee for the serious way that they considered the points that had been raised by submit submitters. They weren't easy because they were directly in conflict with the advice that we were getting from the um, officials on one particular point, that of the um, mortgage fraud and the response that we should have to that. Um, but on the rest, they were um, less contentious but certainly really helpful submissions. Um, I want to just go back to the genesis of this bill, which was developed in consultation between the Law Commission, Crown Law and the New Zealand Law Society which um, produced a report in 2010, which included a draft bill, which is often the practice of the, um, of the Law Commission. The ministers at the time were the Honourable Simon Power and the Honourable Morris Williamson. So it's a bit of a shame that neither of them are able to take a call in the House tonight on this debate, um, because they, they did the work, basically, um, and aren't here to um, take the credit. I know that the Honourable Simon Power now works for Westpac in a very senior position, but I'm not sure what the Honourable Morris Williamson is doing now. Is he still here? Still in heaven? Okay. Well, there you are. There you are. He may, he may, if that is true, be able to take a call in the House. I certainly haven't, haven't heard him asking questions in the House lately, but perhaps tonight's the opportunity to uh, remedy that, or maybe in the, maybe in the committee stages. Um, Mr Chairman, as, as I said, this is a largely, largely technical bill. The Attorney-General, when he made his excellent contribution, I have very rarely heard anyone speak with such passion and detailed knowledge about a bill which is so dry as the land transfer bill, um, but he certainly started this debate off with style and flair. It, the, but the, the point that he made was that even though it is largely technical, and I agree with that, it is fundamentally important to some of the principles that we have held for many years in New Zealand around particularly the security of information and of purchase and of title in regard to land transfer. So, so the principles remained the same. What we were doing was making the bill um, a bit more modern, but more responsive to the way that we do transactions now, uh, certainly more accessible, but looking at potential um, for illegal activity that may have not been available um, for people to exercise when the original legislation was developed. The most um, substantive amendment is around the indefeasibility of title and it provides limited grounds for compensation and redress in case of fraud. We certainly had a lot of um, debate at the committee about that. Um, Paul Foster Bell and his contribution mentioned the very strong submissions from the banking industry. We had the Bankers Association as well as individual banks who completely disagreed with the proposals that were in the original legislation, explained how much additional compliance cost would be incurred, um, which caused us a little bit of concern, I must say. Um, but then when they explained that the entire um, increased compliance cost would be then loaded back on the um, individual customer of the bank, we, we decided that we wanted to make really sure that the additional costs that we would be imposing by the legislation were in fact um, justified. The comparison between the New Zealand and the Australian system is not um, apples with apples, it's apples with pears. They have an entirely different system there. And, and we, in the end, decided that we would, would, we would delete those two provisions, I think it was 54 and 57 in the original bill, um, because they were unnecessary, so we agreed with the representation from the banking industry. But we did also note that mortgage fraud is something that we need to keep an eye on. Uh, we'd had a strong alert from the officials, it was in the legislation as proposed by the Law Commission, Crown Law and the New Zealand Law Society, that these are not people you can dismiss lightly. They have given these issues a lot of considered thought. So we want to just keep an eye on that to make sure that um, if on balance we were wrong, that we are able to um, address it quite smartly in future legislation. We're wrong. We're wrong. 
Oh, well, I'm um, looking forward to the contribution from um, Mr O'Rourke. Unfortunately, New Zealand First doesn't have a representative on the Government Administration Committee, but it would be my view that the committee would welcome the contribution of a New Zealand First member on any of these um, bills or other bills that you're interested in, um, because we want to get it right, actually. And if you think we made an error, we'd be interested in hearing that, and we might have a, a chance to address it in committee stages. Um, you, you may receive a visit from the Bankers Association tomorrow morning. <laughs> I would suggest they made pretty strong. They made pretty strong submissions to the Select Committee. So, um, Mr Speaker, it's a real pleasure to say that the consideration that we gave this bill at the Government Administration has, in my view, improved it, both in some technical areas but in actually some quite big policy areas. It is largely a technical bill. I would have liked some um, inclusion in the bill of the obvious deficiencies that my colleague, the Honourable David Cunliffe, referred to um, in the Overseas Investment Office. It has a very poor track record of vetting inv um, investment approvals. Um, our, our party, through Official Information Act requests, has un uncovered not just one, but many examples of incompetence which have left New Zealand looking uh, quite poor, actually, in terms of the robust robustness of our procedures. I wish the bill had had more attention to the Overseas Investment Office because I think with the same level of consideration that we gave to the Land Transfer Bill with that inclusion, then some of the matters that are clearly in the too hard basket for the government could have been addressed. Um, the, the OIA has actually become a bit of a laughing stock. It, it needs some serious attention. I know that the current minister isn't up to that job. I would invite the Attorney General to apply the same amount of passion as he demonstrated tonight for the land transfer bill to amendments that clearly need to be made, particularly in the vetting and the competence, the integrity of the OIA. Um, I think he's just the man to do it, Mr. Mr Speaker. On that note, I look forward to the other contributions that are going to be made um, to this bill and to its progress through the House.